when we allow ourselves to indulge with nature, with the mind of a child, we discover knowledge to wield with what nature offers. And every momentary experience that we have becomes an epiphany. Such indulgences and results are discernible to the self when we discover that this great idea that we just discovered could make or break one's life. And all this happened unintentionally, impulsively, and in split seconds. And we sometimes call that the aha moment. Every aha moment follows with an imagination, an imagination of wonderful results. Like Einstein said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge. But these wonderful results are simply, they simply follow action. The ancient scriptures of the East, the Bhagavad Gita, says, Karmaneva dhika raste ma phale sukadachana ma karma phale heturvur ma te sangotsava karmani. You have the rights to perform your prescribed duties, but you are not entitled to the fruits of your action. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty. In simple words, it just means you just have to do what you have to do without expecting anything in return. <laughs> and never stop from doing what you have to do because the result is not in our hands. Imagination and dreams can come into action when we have complete belief in the cause than have fears. When we have complete belief in the mission than have insecurities. And when our care for the mission and the journey surpasses our scare. Because life is fun. It's just about playing the game, scoring some points. It's not about winning, because the competition is with the self. And as long as we're scoring points, having fun, all we have to do is just what we have to do. I would like to take you uh, in, a, in a journey of my venture into my company, the Himalayan Dog Shoe. Ten years ago, my brother Suman and his friend Nishes invited me to a dinner and a beer at the kitchen. So three of us are sitting on the kitchen, in the kitchen, and on the table, uh, Suman places a hard uh, chew. Uh, it's a cheese made of milk that people of the Himalayas and the Sherpas chew all the time. He places that chew on the table, and then he says, uh, we would like you to sell this for us. And I was... Uh, and I said, dude, American people are not going to chew this chew. It's too hard. It's a dentist not recommended. <laughs> and Suman goes, it's not for American people, it's for dogs. <laughs> and I go, really? I was bewildered. I couldn't believe him. And then Nisus calls his dog Chaos. Uh, Chaos is the name of the dog. <laughs> He calls the dog Chaos and then gives the chew to Chaos. Chaos uh, sniffs on it, licks on it, and he starts chewing on it. And I go, whoa, this is something. This simple chew made by the farmers out of milk that would otherwise go bad in the summer can actually be a product. And I also thought immediately that if I can't wow the people, I can at least wow the dogs. <laughs> So our first agenda was to take the chew to a local uh, dog park in Bellingham, and this was 2000, late 2007. Uh, three of us went there with a table. Uh, we, placed, uh, we placed the chew on the table, and we were waiting for people with dogs to come by and at least have some interest in our chew. So this lady was walking with the dog, la 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 la, comes, comes uh, right on the table, and I pick up a chew and hand it over to her. And she goes, what's this? 
and I say, this is cheese out of milk. And she goes, really? Because it's so hard. She just couldn't believe it. And I said, uh, it's for your dog. And she goes, okay, let me try. And then she hands it to the dog. The dog sniffs it, uh, licks on it, and started chewing on it. And she actually removes the chew from the dog, and the dog goes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the dog was having his wow moment with the chew. <laughs> so we knew this product was going to work, and we set out a project to procure these chews from the mountains of Nepal. And my father convened a group of farmers in Nepal, and, and we asked the farmers to produce this cheese, the chew, out of milk, that would otherwise go bad in the summer, and they go, we can't sell a lot, people don't eat much. And we say, no, it's not for people in America, it's for dogs in America. And they go, really? <laughs> okay, let's do it. So over the last eight years, we've been procuring this chew. But two and a half, uh, two and a half years ago, my father got really ill. Uh, he was battling a long time uh, with some heart disease. And two and a half years ago, both his kidneys failed. So I had to return to Nepal for a longer period of time. Uh, I went there to our house, um, straight to his room. I open the door, I see him lying on the bed. I go straight to him, uh, touch his feet, and pay my respect. My father opens his eyes and says, Son, you have returned. I said, Yes, Dad. I've returned for you. My father said, no. You're not here for me. You're here for Nepal. And I, I was sort of confused at the time, but he clarified, and then he said, I want you to build 100 libraries. And I said, how am I going to do that? And he said, all you have to do is what you have to do. <laughs> and just put your watch on time. And I immediately thought, my father hardly had any education. My mother never went to school. And this was 60 years ago in Nepal. It was culture, it was a tradition that you don't send daughters to school, and the son uh, does whatever he wants. So I thought, as a child, they never had a chance to study. And there are still many children in Nepal who can't go to school because of either culture or the economic status. So I thought we can build some libraries to send those kids to at least go and study and read and write alphabets. So in the first year, we were able to establish uh, 76 libraries. And in the second year, last March, we were able to do 25 to get 101 in about a year and a half, too. And this March, we are scheduled to establish 35 more. But one, th one month ago today, my father passed away. <clears throat> we, in, in the family, we know he's not with us, but I believe he lives with me. He lives with me with his guidance, with his philosophy, and with his legacy. And from his passing away, and from my adventure with Himalayan dog shoe, and from the recent earthquakes in Nepal, I've come to realize that, that there is no end to journey in life, because the destination is the journey. And we all, we all die alone, just as we are born. We come with nothing, and we live with nothing. And these two are the greatest aha moments in our life. So when we are confident in the self, we believe and we trust in something greater than ourselves, and we take every challenge as an opportunity to become better, to do better, and trust more, every moment in our life can become the aha moment. Thank you. And namaste.